Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new offering from Brian Winters at Winterblade. Now a lot of you are familiar with the video that I did on the Winterblade Factor. This has become one of the most popular knives of the year and for very good reason because it's not built like any other knife. It uses magnets to hold the blade in place like a detent and it uses magnets to slide the lock forward into place. You've also got a magnet inside of this flipper bar to keep it within the body. So Brian is using magnets in a rather unique way. Well, he's decided to use magnets in a different way in the Mirage. Now, a lot of people are going to think that the Factor and the Mirage are just different shapes or sizes of essentially the same knife, but they're not. They're different in how they operate, and they're different in the way they were conceived. This is an assisted opener. Now think of something like a Kershaw Blur. Those were very, very popular for a very, very long time, about 20 years about. And what you're looking at there is a substitute for an automatic knife, meaning it will, it will swing itself open with great force with the use of a spring, but you're not hitting a pusher or sliding a switch or anything else to actuate that more or less automatic type of knife. What you're doing is you're beginning the motion with your thumb, in that case on the thumb studs, and once it's broken free of the detent, then the spring takes over and finishes out the operation. This is somewhat similar, except what you're doing here is you're pulling back on the lock. Now you can operate this like a regular manual knife, no problem at all, and there's nothing that feels assisted about it. If you're like me, you don't like assisted knives, you won't buy assisted knives, this is gonna make you very happy because you could do everything you can do with a normal standard opening manual knife that you can with this. However, if you pull back on the switch, you're gonna watch it break free of the magnets that are holding it in place and the, the magnets are basically in opposition to each other. So when you release that lock, they're going to kick the blade out. They're going to give you that assist to push it out. Now, it's not meant to actually fire out all the way, although, as you can see, you can do it. It's just kind of a slow motion effect. This is meant to assist you in just flipping it open, and you can flip it back closed. Uh, there are a lot of people that have axis lock knives and other similar type knives where they like to just pull back on the lock and swing the knife open and closed. And, you know, it's not going to have a 100% success rate because they may not have enough inertia behind that action in order to do it. Well, with the Mirage, it's always going to work. And I love the different options that this gives you. You can open it and close it however you choose to do it. And in between, just like with the factor, when you've got the lock pulled back, there's no friction whatsoever. So let's get a nice close-up look at this, see how it operates, see how it differs from the factor, and see if this is the knife for you. Well, when it comes to innovation, there really is one dominating name in the game right now, and that is Winterblade. Brian is nothing short of an absolute genius. And if you don't believe me, then all you need to do is visit his Instagram page, and you will see 
probably 10 different prototypes at any one time floating around in his current posts. He's always thinking of something new, thinking outside of the box. How can I make this operate in a different way, but still be as reliable and as functional and not just make it a novelty? And this, the Mirage, is another great example of that ingenuity that Brian has brought into the game. Let's start talking about the specifics of this knife. This is the Winter Blade Mirage, and it is a magnetic assisted opener, as I said in the intro. Now, here's one interesting thing. First and foremost, let's get it out of the way. If you love the look of this knife and you're thinking, man, I really, really want to have something like that. However, I'm not a big fan of assisted openers. That's okay because the magnets inside were designed to be removed. So they're easily removed, and that, when you're done, provides a standard manual opening experience. So if you don't want to have that assisted opening, no big deal. You just simply take the knife apart, and in between the titanium and the carbon fiber, or if you pick the G10 model, in between the titanium and G10, uh, you're able to just Pop those magnets right out of there, and you'll just have a standard, regular old manual deployment knife. So, he's kind of thought of everything and put everybody's feelings into perspective when he was designing this knife. So, this is the first ever magnetic assisted opener. There's never been one prior to this. And so, as with a lot of stuff that Brian does, it is completely groundbreaking. You're looking at $360, and they are manufactured by Best Tech. Brian has made several custom knives on his own, but he enjoys really being a designer. And it allows him to work with big brands like Best Tech and put out a whole bunch of these where a lot of people can get their hands on them during the pre-orders. And... Keep constantly working on new inventions instead of just laboring over making knives. Another interesting thing about this is the lock actually doubles as the detent. So you don't have a standard detent in this knife like you would, say, in a standard folder. You can see, I don't know if I can get enough light in there, but you would normally see a detent bowl pressing against the detent hole in the blade. This the lock actually acts as the detent and holds that blade in place. You can see that the blade will not move unless it has pulled the lock out of the way. So it stays closed in the pocket just like any other standard typical folding knife. Let's get the specs out of the way. Let's move this bad boy right over here and bam, get them specs out. You're looking at an overall length of 7 inches, a blade length of 2.9 inches with a two and three quarter inch cutting edge. Very useful little knife, by the way. Uh, you're getting a choice, not a choice, but you're going to be getting M390 or 20CV. Those are interchangeable steels. They're the same thing made by different manufacturers. They're basically the same specs. It's basically going to be um, whichever steel is available as they're producing it, they will use either or. Handle length is 4.1 inches. And it is, uh, let's see, just under a half an inch thick from clip to presentation side. So it's not overly thick. Let's give you a, a comparison here again against the, uh, the Chavez 229, which is another great, great, great EDC knife. And you see there is a good bit of difference, but not enormous. What does that mean? Why am I making such a big deal out of that? Because if you look at the factor, the factor was made to be very, very, very skinny and very thin and somewhat tall. This is proportioned a little bit more like a standard EDC knife. You've also got a captured pivot here with a, uh, it's basically got a D shape uh, underneath this side. So if for some reason, and you will never have to, but if for some reason you have to make pivot adjustments, that side is not free spinning. You don't have to have another tool holding it in place or anything like that. When you go to disassemble the knife, it's just pulling it or unscrewing it from one side and not having to worry about that. Because again, you can remove those magnets if you wanted to, so you are able to take it apart pretty easily. Now, can this be used or is it just a novelty? And I think a lot of people have an automatic assumption 
when they look at a design like this and go, okay, well, that's really thin blade stock. So yeah, it's going to be wonderfully slicey, and it is, but can I actually hard use this knife? Well, actually, yeah, you can. Here's some interesting things to, to keep in mind. It has three, not the standard two, three shouldered stop pins inside. You've got a quarter inch pivot, so you've got a very substantial strong pivot, half inch in diameter thrust bearings, and the M lock, which we have uh, seen proven uh, itself very, very, very well in the factor. So you don't have any concerns about actually using the knife because it's not delicate in any way. And the polished spine that you're seeing here, that is a full length backspacer and it's made of stainless steel. Now he could do that in stainless steel and it not be a heavy knife because there's basically, this is all titanium, excuse me, carbon fiber liners with a thin plate of titanium on either side and a fairly thin blade stock. So what you've got is still a very lightweight knife, but the strength of that stainless steel going all the way up the spine and meeting up to the backside of the blade. So you've got a knife here that, yes, you absolutely can use. Um, as a matter of fact, the reason why I am so late to the game getting this video out, uh, almost two months late, is because I was moving halfway across the country when uh, Brian had this prototype ready and sent it out. Hey guys, sorry for the interruption. I promise I'll be quick. Now, since you guys know I don't take on sponsors and I don't do affiliate links, there's only a couple of ways that you can still support my channel and allow me to purchase more great knives to come out here and review for you. And that number one is to subscribe to my Patreon. If you'd like to become a patron, you could do it for as little as $5 a month and every dollar of that goes toward this channel and supporting all the things that I enjoy doing along with you. Now, the other way you can do it is, hey, I've got swag. So if you see some of the shirts that I wear or coffee mugs that I've got or you want a new iPhone case or something like that, I've got some cool stuff right down here at this link and you can visit my Teespring store. Now, it's kind of an automated thing. I don't have any control over it. So when you order it, they print it usually within a few days and they get it shipped on out to you. I've got stickers, I've got t-shirts and all kinds of cool stuff. And last but not least, and this is something everybody can do without becoming a member of anything, right down there, there is a button that says Super Thanks that YouTube puts up on there. And if you click that, you can donate a dollar or $10 or $1,000 or whatever you want to donate that helps to continue grow this channel. Now, I promised it would be short. Let's get back to the video. Thanks, guys. So what I told him, I said, listen, I said, I'd love to sit down and make a video of it. He's like, hey, don't worry about it. Just, just you know, give me your thoughts on the knife. And, you know, if, if people ask you about it, tell them what you think about it. So, no, no, I'm going to make a video. I said, but here's the thing. I'm moving. And I said, I'm going to keep a few of my knives out and going with me. Because, you know, so my movers picked everything up. And then I drove 27 hours uh, in the car in between. So it's like, I, I definitely want to have knives and all that kind of good stuff with me. Um, and I want to have all my other knives secured away in my locked up cases in the car with me as we travel. So what I wanted to do was keep out a couple of knives. This was one. This knife was used the entire time I was packing up everything for the house, everything that I had to cut down, any packing material, anything like that. Um, when I arrived and then the movers arrived and I started unpacking things, this was about 80% of every box that got cut open was this about 80, 90% of all the cardboard that I tore down, that I cut down to collapse and then recycle was done with this knife. As a matter of fact, if you go back on my channel, you'll see that little, uh, little reels or story or short, what well, yeah, YouTube calls them shorts that I did, um, on the day that these released for the, uh, the drop or excuse me for the uh, pre-order. And you can look at my blade. It was all nasty and gummy and just, it looked like it was battered up. And as you see, it cleaned up very, very well. So yeah, this knife I actually used the living hell out of, and I was so wonderfully happy with the performance of it. There's a couple little niggles here and there, and I'll talk about them in a second, but I wanted to make sure that you got a chance to see this in size perspective uh, against some other knives. 
and then we'll weigh it. So first and foremost, yes, we'll put it up against the factor. Give you a size ID on there. And as you see, it is nearly identical in its overall length and in its blade length with a little bit more cutting edge and obviously a lot more belly because we're going from uh, a sheep's foot blade to, uh, would you want to call it a spear point? I guess you could call it a spear point. So it's a little bit more usable in some facets than the factor blade would be. Now let's uh, get that out of the way. Put it up against another compact knife that I absolutely love. And that is my EMP EDC Nimble. And as you see, it is virtually identical, just a teeny tiny little bit larger. And it's funny because the, the Mirage looks in pictures and even in the hand, like it might be bigger than the original standard three inch um, nimble, but it's not, it's almost identical in size. And then you get to the thicknesses and again, almost identical. Even the blade stock is nearly the same. So if you're one of the thousands upon thousands that own a nimble and you're like, man, I really love something uh, else uh, along that size and usability, uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a fantastic choice for you. And since I had the Chavez out here, we'll put it up against it, and you'll see that it is uh, quite a bit smaller than the Chavez. And there are, again, thousands upon thousands of you EDCing or, or own and carry the 229. There is your size difference there. It is quite a bit smaller, a lot more pocket-friendly, a lot more lightweight. As a matter of fact, I'll break out the scale here. And, of course, a... Uh, well, Use a banana for scale, and there you go. It's uh, it's just about the size of a silicone banana. So if your wife has any silicone products laying around, it might be around the same size. I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, let's get some weights going on here. Doo, 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 doo. 3.3, oh, 3.4 ounces. 3.4 ounces. Compare that to the factor. 3.3 ounces, so nearly identical in the way that it carries. So again, 3.4 ounces, the Nimble, 3.7. The Nimble's a little bit heavier. All titanium frame lock, a little bit thicker on the titanium, so it's going to add a little bit of weight. Now, for somebody that carries a standard-sized knife as an EDC like the Chavez, watch that number jump. 3.4, 6.6. And a lot of people are carrying in the four and a half to six and a half ounce range as their EDC. There are a lot of people that say, I won't go over four ounces for EDC. Okay, fine. There you go. 3.4 ounces. So I think most everybody is going to be wonderfully happy with this. So basically what you're dealing with here is an assisted opener, as I explained in the intro. So it is somewhat similar in the way that it operates to an automatic, meaning it's gonna, it's, I wanna say spring itself open, but it doesn't have any springs inside. It has magnets, but it will uh, spring itself open, and all you need to do is just give it a little nudge for it to do so. Now, this is a little bit different. What this is gonna do is that nudge is gonna go ahead and push that blade out for you to complete whatever action you have going on. Can you open it all the way? Yeah, you can. As you see, it's a very slow process. It's like, ooh, but it does go to full lock. You don't have to worry about that. So what it's doing is it's going to break free of the magnets and the the opposing listen i'm not i'm not a, a science teacher i can't tell you about everything about how magnets work but the basic understanding of magnets is the polarity if if you have them um whoa what, what was it called in phase and out of phase would that would that be correct i mean i, I know that's how yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. So if, if they're they're in phase, uh, they're going to be attracted to each other. And if they're out of phase, so you take one and you flip it over, they're going to be pushing against each other. And that's basically what it's doing to this blade right here. So for those of you that love to have an axis lock or any other similar type of lock, uh, the shark lock on the Demcos, anything where you can release the lock and that provides a zero friction uh, midway action for the blade, 
you're already used to kind of swinging your blades open and closed by using the lock. And this just gives you an extra little nudge so it makes it even easier and it locks up even harder and even faster. And I think a lot of people are going to dig that. So basically, it'll kick it out and you can kick it out a little bit more. But you see how the magnets are working here and there is one of the opposing magnets right there. And you see that it will suck it back in just like a really, really good detent. My uh, Chavez has a really good detent. Once you get it to that detent, it sucks it back in. And this, I mean, it's even more dramatic in the way that it does it. And it sounds good too. You feel kind of a springy action there as the magnets are getting close to each other. And then it just sucks it in. When you get to here, it just locks in place just like the factor. So you have magnets that are pulling that switch into place as well. So as you see, if I've got the switch pulled back, there's no lock. It doesn't lock up. There's nothing there. As soon as I let go of it, the magnets pull it forward, and it's locked. Super tough lock. Nothing that you're ever going to have to worry about. So, you've got a one-of-a-kind, innovative knife that's not just a delicate little showpiece. You can actually use the living shit out of it. You don't have to baby this knife in any way. And that's not to say that you ever had to baby the factor. It just, in my opinion, um, even though it's it's got the, the M lock and, and everything else, it is a strong, strong knife. The lock is unbelievably strong. It is a good, usable knife. I still look at it as more of a utility knife than anything else. This one, you're just, you're met with the feeling that this was meant to be used all the time, everywhere. I love the design. Let's start. We'll go from uh, we'll go from tip to butt. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus super close. There we go. Because I want to give you some very very close up views so that you can see every part. And there's where I wiped it off with a yellow rag. That pivot is gorgeous. There's your lock. There's your carbon fiber liners. You'll have a choice of carbon fiber or G10. There's a look inside to where the thrust bearings are. There you can see the lock disengaging and the magnets pulling it back into place. Great sandblasted or bead blasted, I should say, finish. Love his branding on these as well. Carbon fiber exposed because of the uh, frame being cut away. Excellent, excellent, excellent pocket clip. I love this pocket clip. It works fantastically well. And you've got that extra little area there for the, you know, the fat of your skin to drop in. And you can just kind of pull it out because it is a pretty deep carry pocket clip. So you can grab it and pull it without applying additional pressure to the clip. More of the exposed carbon fiber. And the window, by the way, the blade window is nicely chamfered, so if you're going to do the, uh, the finger flicking of it, uh, you don't have to worry about it tearing off pieces of your, of your fingernail. It flies right open. Now, I said I had a couple little niggles with it, and honestly, it's really only one. If you're a lefty, I don't know how this is going to affect you. Well, I guess I can find out. Actually, it won't affect you. But if you're a righty, if you're going to finger flick it, right where I want to put my thumb on this size knife, when I go to flick it, the lock tends to hit, or the lock switch tends to hit my thumb. And that can sometimes slow down the blade because I'm applying pressure to that lock, which is going to add friction. So every now and then, it'll kind of do that on me if I'm doing the finger flick. I obviously don't have a problem if I'm using it as intended and I'm letting it pop the blade out and then I swing it open. And look how slowly it pops it open. It's just like a gentle push 
and you don't have to give it much movement at all. So for me, as much as I do like finger flicking it, um, I prefer the factor for that because there's something about the size of that blade window, where I'm putting my, th where I'm resting my thumb, my thumb never ever gets in the way of that. And yes, of course, I still do uh, flip it with the, uh, the flipper bar as well. But uh, this is one of those knives that, uh, actually it was these two knives right here that got me into to finger flicking. I never ever liked it before and uh, it is so wonderfully addictive. This one, uh, I tend to use it as it was intended. I'm trying not to hit my other knife. All you gotta do is just pull back on it and it whips it right on out. I love that feeling. It's different. It is wildly unique. But when it comes down to it, as much as I like this, I still prefer the factor. I per prefer the fidgetiness of the factor. Again, they do operate in different ways. I prefer a lot about the factor. But the Mirage is still fantastic. I love cutting with it. I love carrying it. It's very, very, I mean, it's just, it disappears in the pocket. You don't really even know that you're carrying a knife, and that's wonderful. Where the factor, being taller, you kind of know it's there. I mean, there's no real weight to it. You don't really feel it there. Uh, and because it's so thin, again, that helps it to kind of disappear in your pocket. Uh, but the height of it, uh, particularly when closed, I mean, that's, that's pretty tall. Whereas the Mirage, as you could see, is quite a bit narrower. It still comes up a bit. He likes his blades to come up in, in this fashion, and that's uh, also where he's placing his pivot, where that blade is going to be locking up. So you're, you're going to have that shoulder uh, on it. I think pretty much all of his designs, I have to really look and see if his, uh, some of his future designs are uh, going to have that type of shoulder there or not. But anyway, the, uh, the Mirage is truly fantastic. Totally dig it. It's worth every penny and more. Um, if I had to only own one of these, it would be the Factor, hands down, all day, every day. I'm going to be getting another Factor. And as you guys see on my Instagram, it, th there are a lot of days that the Mirage, uh, excuse me, that the Factor takes over my pocket. I'm an enormous fan, and that's just the way it is. The Mirage is so close. It's so close to being that level of perfection that I feel that the factor is that I am so, so glad to have it. I do love the feeling. It does feel more substantial somehow in the hand. Maybe it's because my fingers can come around it more. Maybe it's because of that very solid feeling uh, backspacer that's on there. The way that your thumb just lands on the back of the spine. Everything about it just feels more like this is an EDC knife that can be hard used and it's not going to give you any arguments and it's never going to feel delicate. And you know what? That's pretty damn cool. I also like the fact that you've got titanium on both sides with the factor. You had titanium, then you had carbon fiber. Here, you can see both the titanium and the carbon fiber on both sides. So that, my friends, is my thoughts on the Winter Blade Mirage. For those of you that pre-ordered middle of November, uh, it's six to eight months out. And then once the pre-order closed, Brian kept orders open for a while longer. So a lot more people are going to have mirages than they did the factor on the first run. And I guarantee you there are going to be future runs of the mirage. So as soon as you see Brian posting about it, follow his account. When you see him posting about it, hey, I'm going to do a pre-order on this date and this time for this knife. Get there and get your pre-order in. It almost doesn't matter what knife you get from him. You know you're getting something wildly innovative, completely groundbreaking, and it will be something that's completely unique in your collection. With that, I'm out of here, guys. Hope you all have a wonderful holiday season spent with family and friends, and I'll see you on the next video.